As you can see, we have the lighthouse right behind us, and now Jay Schneiderman joins us. And you're a Montauk resident. You grew up here. What was it like growing up in Montauk? Montauk is a special place, no doubt. Um, well, it's different than the rest of Long Island. You're a lot more isolated. It's a very tight community. Everybody knows each other. Everybody takes care of each other, looks out for each other. It's a great place to spend time, whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult. It's a, it's a very special place. So, Jay, what are some of the, the great things here in Montauk for people to see? Well, obviously, the lighthouse behind us, uh, one of our nation's first public works, commissioned by George Washington. That's uh, Certainly, no trip to Montauk would be complete without a trip out to the lighthouse. Um, the beaches, gorgeous sandy beaches out here. People love to go surfing out of Ditch Plains. Uh, people like to go surf casting, catching fish or, all year round, or going out to the docks and you know, chartering a boat, going out. Uh, uh, great fishing in the Montauk area. There's amazing trails. Nature is all around us. Uh, Montauk is 70% preserved open space, so it's uh, almost like living in a park. The Metro New York Balloon and Music Festival is back at the Calabro Airport for the second year in a row. Now, if you missed it, don't worry, because we have you covered. The festival is fantastic. People are friendly. It's a great day. We're having a fantastic time. Fabulous. Great day. Great ballooning. It's all up. It all worked out beautifully. So, first time ever here, and it's just unbelievably amazing. Well, there was a balloon festival here about 11 years ago, and uh, the sponsor that had it went away, and the actual event stopped for about five years. But we kind of took it over, and uh, we didn't want it to be just a balloon festival. We wanted to create something that would be really unique and exciting for the people on Long Island, uh, really like a state fair. And that's what we've done. It's three days of entertainment and things to do for the whole family. There's approximately 400 vendors here. There's over 70 musical acts that are performing. Monster truck shows are here with skydivers. Mega kites, which have never been seen before around here. Uh, we have the largest kite in the world. I could probably spend 20 minutes going through the whole roster of entertainment that we have here, if you let me. My name is Greg Hildebrand, and uh, I'm an artist. I was talking to my mother, she said she could see that my brother and I both were able to stay focused at two years old in drawing. So I'd say around two, we probably started to draw. I never made a decision to be an artist. It was just there, this obsession or compulsion to, to draw, to make things, to build, to, to design. The way I always kind of like think about it, it chose me, I didn't choose it. It's kind of unusual growing up on the east side of Detroit in a blue collar world. We'd be more pragmatic about settling on a job of some kind. But our parents completely let us go and in fact supplied us with, uh, our dad worked at GM in the stock room. He started as a stock boy and then worked his way up to head of office supply for Chevy. So we had this constant supply of raw material. We had packed piles of paper that, so you never had to stint on drawing. You could just draw and draw and draw and draw. And our mother was always very big on fostering our imaginations. I mean, that was the big, that, that, that one word from my past, from my mother is, use your imagination. Use your imagination. Like, don't, and, and don't follow the crowd. Angela's House is a collaboration between the Association for Technology Dependent Children and IGHL, two private nonprofit corporations who have worked together to develop this home. This is a home for eight medically frail, technologically dependent, developmentally disabled children. Angela Paula Castro was a young medically frail child who was placed out of state and passed away. Her father had the dream of developing homes for other children so that what happened to Angela wouldn't happen to them. Angela's One in East Mauritius has been open for five years. This house just opened in June of 2005, so it's been operating for about seven and a half months. Assemblyman Wiesenberg ensured the funding for this program so that it could go forward. 
for years we tried to get enough funding to develop a home of this type because it's very expensive. But it wasn't until Assemblyman Wiesenberg got on board that the funding was insured. At one point in time, he stayed on the assembly floor for 28 straight hours to make sure that the money for this program didn't go out of the bill that it was listed under. So he's like a grandfather here to all the children. He's very close with all the families, and he's been very involved from the beginning of this program. Uh, this is Cablevision's Meet the Leaders. We've been talking to Assemblyman Harvey Wiesenberg. Uh, tell us all about Angela's house and, and, and what drove you to, to finally bring these children home from other states where they were being farmed out for treatment. Well, it was the Paula Castro family. They're the <clears throat> parents of Angela, who I uh, was speaking in Smithtown. They told me about the story about their child who uh, passed away, and they got a phone call and went up there. It was too late. And then I found out, and I gave him my word that we're going to do something about this, that the state of New York cannot export our handicapped children. The photo that was shown with the picture of the lifeguard over the overpass. By the way, that lifeguard looked very familiar to me. Yeah, well, it was, it was an honor that was bestowed upon me. But if you took a look at the picture, there were children in a boat down there. And these were children that were waiting to get into Angela's house, too, and who passed on. But when we dedicated the house, it was brought to view that these children were not here in, in person and body, were there in spirit, that they are now really part, they are in Angela's house. Yeah.